What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video we're working on the 1995 Corolla wagon again. And it's got a little bit of an oil pan leak, so I'm gonna show you how to take the oil pan off. Obviously we have to drain the oil, so this basically includes an oil change. Take the oil pan off, clean it up, reseal it, put it back, and fill it up with fresh oil. It's a pretty easy job, uh, and every so often you have to reseal it, and I'll show you what to do and what not to do. Having said that, let's get started. So first things first, let's jack up the car. So let's start by draining the oil, 14 millimeter socket. Go ahead and remove the uh, drain plug. All right, once it gets to the end, hold pressure on it so that it doesn't fall out with oil spilling all over the place. And once you feel that it's at the end of the threads, go ahead and pull it straight out. And this is how you don't make a mess. Now we'll just let this drain all the way. Well, I just have a small stream of oil coming out at this point, so I'm gonna cap it off. You're never gonna get all of it out anyway. I just want the majority out so that when I take down the pan, it doesn't spill on my face. Anyway, so let's cap this off. I'm just gonna snug it up, that way it stops dripping. There we go, clean off the drippage here. And now we'll go all around, and there are 10 millimeter bolts holding this pan on. Among the 10 millimeter bolts, there should be two 10 millimeter nuts with studs coming through, and that's actually very helpful because that's what's gonna help you line up the pan at the end. So I'm gonna go all around and remove the 10 millimeter bolts. As you can see, this is the area where it's leaking. The gasket has failed. Hmm, that one wasn't even tight. Why was that not tight? I think the oil pan just popped off the block. I don't know, heard something. Keep on going. should get safety glasses. Wear your safety glasses, people. Here you go. I'm usually bad at wearing them. All right, all the hardware is off. So at this point, I'm gonna get my collection bucket because things are gonna drip. All right, so usually <laughs> you would need a pry bar. I'm gonna get a pry bar, but this thing is ready to come off. So here's what we're gonna do. In order to prevent splashing all over the place, I'm gonna re-thread partially one of the bolts. So that one, and let's go for one at the front. Anywhere, right there, all right. So this will prevent the pan from coming down fast as I take it off. Get yourself a little pry bar. They don't really give you many areas to pry in. Oh, there we go. I just broke it free. Still attached up front though. Now when you pry it, sometimes you have to hammer a screwdriver in here. I really don't like doing that, but sometimes you really have to because it's so stuck. Just make sure you don't bend the pan too much because then you'll have to straighten it out so that it seals. And I can't tell why this isn't coming off. Oh, that's bending it. So I'm gonna stick a smaller pry bar on the back side here, where it did break free, to basically keep it pried down. There we go. Oh, this, this bolt isn't even doing anything, so I'll take that out. Well, looks like I missed a bolt right here. And that's what was holding it on. And my pry bar fell right in the oil bucket, so that's cool. Okay, here's the pan. Tilt it down to remove all the rest of the oil. There you have it. Now we just have to do a lot of cleaning. This is the old gasket. It's a cork gasket. I absolutely hate these. I'm not sure why I put this on here, because I know that this was me last time that I did this. Uh, I was 100% sure that I put on RTV, not this, but I guess I was wrong. So I disappointed myself. Anyway, so basically I have a gasket scraper here. You can use a razor blade, screwdriver, pry bar, literally anything that you have that will take this off. Don't worry about this surface. As long as it is flat, you're good to go. And of course we're gonna apply some RTV at the end to uh, do the job right this time. Again, I hate these cork gaskets not just because they're a pain to take off, but they don't really seal very well for very long. So it's kind of a waste of money in my opinion. Anyway, you do you if you like them, go ahead and use them. I'm not going to, I'm gonna put our TV on. And I've had times where gasket scrapers and screwdrivers and pry bars or whatever didn't even work. I had to take a wire wheel on my grinder and grind the gasket off with, or 
wire wheel the gasket off, I guess, not grind it, but you get the point. It's kind of a pain to take off and RTV does a much better job. So let's just get this whole thing off of here. Go ahead and wipe off the rest of the surface. Make sure that everything has come off of it. You don't want any remaining gasket or debris on this. And then we'll degrease it and apply our TV. It looks like, or it feels like some of these bolt holes are a little bit pushed up actually. So I'm gonna take a hammer, flatten them down. The perks of this oil pan being steel is it is sort of moldable. You can see my little weld job here back when I was learning how to weld, clearly, because it's not great, but there was a little rot hole that I plugged up. I'm just gonna go ahead and degrease this. One last thing I wanna do is to clean out the inside of this oil pan. I cleaned out the outside, it's ready for RTV, but obviously I can't leave that stuff in there. So I'm gonna take some brake parts cleaner and just spray it all down. Then I'm gonna take a rag and dry it. Well, I guess it's hot enough outside to where it dries very fast, so I'm just gonna give this about 30 seconds or a minute and it should be dry. Now you wanna take some RTV. I'm using black RTV. It's best for oily situations, such as an oil pan or oil pumps or whatever. And, and I wanna run a thin bead of this in the middle of this surface, just like this, going on the inside of the bolt holes. Try to get the bead to be a continuous bead if possible, but if not, that's fine. Just pick up where you left off and make sure that the two ends meet together and blend in. Otherwise you'll have a gap there for oil to escape. I did kind of a crappy job, but I'm gonna go ahead and even it out with a clean glove. Usually I'm much better at this. Not really sure why this one came out really bad. Just gonna go ahead and even it out. I don't wanna have too much in one spot and not enough in another spot. You wanna make sure it's as even as possible. And while we let the RTV tack up a little bit, I wanna clean up this surface and get it ready for the new gasket. If you had RTV already before here, you'd wanna scrape that off either with a gasket scraper or a razor blade. I have no gasket left over here, so I'm just gonna take a rag with brick parts cleaner and degrease this whole surface. You don't want any oil here, otherwise the RTV will not stick. So just go around, degrease the whole surface. As a side note, for 350,000 miles, this bottom end doesn't look too bad. If you see a lot of sludge buildup, you know you're not changing the oil often enough. Maybe it's not you, maybe it's the previous owner, but you know, change it. All right, take another clean rag, finish everything off. Again, you wanna make sure that there is no oil left on the surface here. Any small amount of oil will cause the gasket not to seal up and you'll have a leak pretty much right away. All right, I'd say this surface is ready. You can see there's a stud here and a stud over here. Both of those have to line up with the oil pan. That's what helps you guide it into place a lot easier. So take the oil pan, put it up and over here, make sure it clears the exhaust. I didn't clean the outside of it. I'm gonna clean it after the gasket has seated. Try to line up the studs. There we go, that just fell into place. I'm gonna take a few bolts and start them in so that I can uh, let go 
and once I let go, I'll start the rest of them. I won't tighten them yet. I just want to hold this pan in for a few minutes to let the RTV tack up a little more, and then I will put the rest of them in. Okay, so now I have two in, I can let go. I'm just gonna go ahead and start them all at this point. Okay, so all the bolts are in, they're bottomed out. I'm gonna let this sit for about 10 minutes, then I'm gonna tighten it up. And while that's starting to dry up, I'm gonna change the oil filter, which is located underneath the exhaust manifold. And I don't want oil running down in my fresh RTV. So looking back, I should have done this before, but I didn't. So I'm just gonna stuff some rags down there. And as I undo the oil filter, hopefully the rags will catch the uh, remaining oil that wants to drip down. Oil filters shouldn't be extremely tight. You should be able to get them off by hand or worst case with an oil filter wrench. And this is actually perfect. It looks like my oil filter isn't leaking a lot. It's leaking a little bit, but enough to where I can contain it with these rags. All right, so take this off. Now take your pre-filled or primed oil filter, whatever you want to call it. If you want a detailed oil change video on this, I have one. I'll link it down in the description. In this video, I'm not really going to talk much about oil change. I'm replacing the oil pan gasket or resealing it, I guess. So that's what this is about. But like I said, if you want to know more about oil change procedures, I'll link the video in the description. Make this oil filter nice and tight, but not too tight. Now the torque for this is very low. Um, I think it's somewhere around seven foot pounds. I don't have a torque wrench that goes that low. The lowest I have is uh, my three eighths. I think it bottoms out at 10 or 15. So I'm just gonna take my quarter inch ratchet and this is how I would always do it even if probably if I had a torque wrench that could, went that low. I'm just gonna snug it. I'm gonna go around, snug all of them in a uh, cross pattern that way the oil pan can seat itself properly and i'm gonna just feel it out make sure i put the same amount of pressure on every bolt and then once that's done i'm gonna go back around and actually give it a little extra so it can fully tighten down and that's about all you need with uh, the uh, oil pan tightening procedure All right, I snugged all of them. Now I'm gonna go in a circle and just make sure that they're all nice and tight. All right. This is done. I double checked my drain plug to make sure it's tight. Let's go up top and fill it up with oil. Last step, come over to the fill cap, take that off. Make sure you drop it like I did. That's always great. And fill up the engine with four quarts of your choice of oil. I use 10W40 in this engine because it burns a lot and it's old and it's tired and it likes 10W40. Uh, the recommended is 530 or 1030. That's what the owner's manual say. And for the 7 AFE, which is the 1.8 liter, and I'm pretty sure it's the same for the 1.6, which is the 4 AFE, if the outside temperature is above negative 18 Celsius or zero Fahrenheit, then you can use 1030 at all times. If it goes below, it's 530. But of course, a good universal oil is 530 for these engines. Again, if you need any extra information on oil changes and whatnot, go ahead and check out my oil change playlist. 
and this car will have a detailed oil change in that playlist. I'm going to link it all down in the description. So I'm trying to get four quarts of oil in here without overfilling it. It's not a big deal if you go a little bit over, but I usually like to keep that last quart for the uh, <laughs> top off in between oil changes. It burns about a quart every thousand miles. I change the oil every 2,000 miles on this and I keep that last quart to top off at the 1,000 mile mark between oil changes. Yes, I know, 2,000 mile oil changes is ridiculous, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do to keep the engine going. All right, a little bit more. Okay, that should be four quarts right there. Now you can even put a new oil change sticker on your car because technically you did an oil change. So that's the end of the video. I hope it was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you've got some good information out of it as always parts tools and fluids are going to be in the description so check those out if you're interested if you have anything to say leave it in the comment section below i read all your guys's comments and i respond to probably 99 percent of them and thank you for the continued support with this 95 corolla wagon you guys love videos on this car so i'm just gonna keep pushing them out and having said that don't forget to like comment subscribe and i'll see you in the next one